All right, I got a lot of new figures over the past couple days. So the uh, the next few weeks of reviews are gonna have a lot of fun stuff in them. But for today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Golden Disc Collection Terror Soar. This is one that I've been excited about for uh, for a while now. And uh, it, just a few days ago in, in the Mutant Tigatron review, I mentioned how I was hoping that this one would show up early since all the other Golden Disc Collection guys were showing up early. And lo and behold, a few days later, uh, I've got them. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is a, a really nice figure. Um, it is a, uh, a pretty heavy retool of the Kingdom Air Razor uh, figure, which we'll show off with uh, them together in a bit. But uh, yeah, uh, to start off with, he comes with a few different accessories here. Uh, since this is the Golden Disc Collection, I figured they had to have at least one of the figures actually come with a Golden Disc. And uh, Eris, uh, Eris, or Terror Soar comes with uh, another version of the uh, the Vok Disc, which is a little strange since the uh, you know the the packaging art is the uh, the other disc, but eh, still cool. Um, it's the exact same mold as the one that came with uh, the Kingdom Arc figure, so. Um, it, it's pretty much the same. It's a little bit darker. You can kind of tell there. So that's what it looks like with that one. And there it is with the uh, the other one too. So cool, I guess. Uh, I mean, I didn't really need it because I got the arc. So I have, you know, both the uh, the other discs. But if, if you didn't pick up the arc, it is a cool way to get one of those discs. I don't know if they're going to have another figure come with, with this disc again. So you can actually get both without getting the Titan class figure. But eh. Cool. I didn't really need it, but I, I guess it's, you know, it doesn't hurt to have another one of them. Um, he also comes with uh, these two little, uh, little spike things, which really are just kind of like optional parts of his robot mode. Like you pretty much just plug them in and then leave them there. They stay in the same place for transformation. So uh, just because Pterosaur in the cartoon had, had spikes on his arms and uh, they didn't really, they didn't, I don't think, remold the parts, the uh, the lower arms here from Air Razor. So instead of, like, doing remolding and giving the spikes, um, they just made them, like, able to plug in. So you can just plug them into the ports here. And that's where they store for this mode, too. Uh, they go this way for their uh, robot mode configuration, but I tend to put them in like this for, uh, for the uh, pterodactyl mode, just so... You know they're a little bit more swept back and not sticking out. You know against the uh, the aerodynamics of the the rest of the animal mode, and that's a that's a fine way to store them. They pretty much you know just stay there in both modes and just rotate around. So uh, yeah, cool. I guess yeah. I don't know if they really even count as accessories because really they're just you know new parts of the uh, of the uh, mold there. And then of course he comes with his gun. And um, yeah, storage wise, uh, he's got. A few different ways you could store it. He's got little uh, little slots right here that correspond to little tabs on the gun here, and you could store it like that. Um, I'm not overly thrilled with that just because it's still pretty visible, but it also has similar little slots like that on the underside of the wing here, so you can tab it in like that. And while it's not like, you know, completely perfect in terms of like being completely hidden away, which, you know, perfect storage for that would be just like integrated into the alt mode in some way, it is still a lot more out of the way. And I I'm content with that, you know, that that's certainly a lot better than just like pegging it onto the back and, and having that count as weapon storage like they do with a lot of figures. So I I'm good with this. You know, it, it maybe like hinders the wing articulation a little bit and it falls off sometimes, but I, I think that's a pretty good solution. Uh, before we get into comparisons and his articulation in this mode, I just want to show off real quickly our last uh, Golden Disc Collection box here. And, you know, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but the Golden Disc Collection is an Amazon exclusive uh, set of four different uh, sets, basically. And uh, what's I don't usually show off the packaging in uh, in my reviews, but uh, since they did something kind of interesting with the Golden Disc Collection is they've made it have this sort of little... Uh, diorama well i keep saying diorama it's not a diorama really it's just a a combined image here with all four of the boxes to of course create the golden disc from the golden disc collection and uh yeah that looks pretty good uh it's <laughs> a bummer that uh you know the the boxes on the right don't really line up um that's really kind of the fault of the mutant tigatron box just because like it's also like an inch thicker than the other boxes too so it doesn't quite line up but whatever, it still creates the uh, the full image there, which is nice. And, uh, you know, that it, it still makes for a nice display piece, even if it's not quite as clean as it could have been. But just putting those all off to the side here, we'll bring back on Terror Soar. Um, 
in terms of articulation in this mode is pretty similar to Air Razor, but does have some extra stuff here. Uh, the head is on a swivel here, it can rotate back and forth. It also has this, uh, mostly for transformation, but you can use it in this mode. It kind of hinges up and down here a little bit. Uh, the mouth can open, which is great and looks really nice. Uh, the wings have a similar sort of setup to pterosaurs, but none of it is the same mold, so it's not quite the same. He's got a hinge here, hinge here, well, a double hinge here, but again, sort of similar to, or to a, I said pterosaur, to air razor. Uh, he does have a piece that kind of plugs in here, so you can't really bend it the other way without risking breaking it. Um, and then there's another hinge right here. And then these pieces can, can fall off sometimes, but uh, when they're tabbed on, they just have a, a, a swivel in and out like that. So that works pretty well for wing articulation. You know, you can kind of get them swooped up like this and it, it looks a little bit silly and boxy just like it did with Air Razor. But, you know, it, it's better than just having it completely static and, and uh, uh, out to the side like this. And I think it works a little bit better on him than it did on Air Razor just because like, uh, we're much more familiar with what a hawk looks like when it's got its wings, uh, you know, folded up, whereas this is probably equally as inaccurate to uh, to an actual pterodactyl. But without having that frame of reference of like really seeing these animals out and about in our actual lives, it, it, it gets away with it a little bit more, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Um, you can kind of fold the tail up. This is really much more for transformation, but I mean, you can do it. Um, and then the, the legs here are a similar situation where like the upper robot legs, or I guess really the upper shins are supposed to kind of be part of the body. And then just the lower shins and the feet are supposed to be the, uh, the legs here, which is a little awkward, but it works well enough. And you can kind of rotate these to get a different angle and the feet are on ball joints. And then you can hinge these in and out. It sort of has like these locking positions where it wants to lock out like that, but he definitely just can't stand with it like that. So like it's between here and here, and that's a little bit too high. But since it's soft enough of like a faux ratchet, you can kind of get it to like sit in between. And the more you do that, the, the like looser that, you know, not looser, but like the easier it is to get it to stop there. And I think that's the best look for him where he's kind of standing like partway between those two stopping points. But uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much all there is to the articulation for this one. I think it works fairly well. Uh, one thing worth mentioning, and this is a bigger issue for robot mode, is the ball joints the feet are on are a little bit loose on my copy, like floppy loose if you're not balancing him correctly, which again, isn't too big of an issue in, uh, in this mode since like he's kind of balanced with it all the way bent back on the feet. Uh, anyway, but in robot mode, that can be a little bit annoying. It's not terrible, but we'll get into that later. But yeah, here he is with with Air Razor, just so you can see uh, lots of remolding here. I mean, it's it's using the same kind of design skeleton, but really, uh, by and large, it's mostly new parts. Um, like, I think that the lower arms, definitely, and the lower legs, besides the feet, are all the same parts and probably some of those armature bits are the same parts, but otherwise, like the, all of the uh, the beast mode sculpting and robot mode sculpting is pretty much completely different. I mean, it kind of had to be since they turn, in, turn into two completely different animals, even if they are both uh, flying creatures, but that's what they look like together. Um, here he is with uh, our other beast from the Golden Disc collection, the Mutant Tigatron cool. And then <laughs> just because he's also in the Golden Disc Collection and also turns into a pterodactyl, here he is with sights. Cool. Um, here he is with our other uh, Season 1 uh, Predacons from Beast Wars. Here's Megatron and Scorponok and Waspinator. So you can see what he looks like with them. Just waiting on Tarantulas, who we haven't seen yet. Hopefully, like rumors are that he's supposed to be coming in Legacy, but he's the last one that we need to, to fill out the, the Season 1 Predacons. And I guess we can also count Dinobot here if we want to. Um, and yeah, yeah, they look pretty good together. It definitely fits the Kingdom aesthetic, even though it's technically part of a different line. But, you know... Nowadays, most of the different lines are just excuses to give us like different figures that all more or less fit together. I mean, you've got your like Bayverse movie designs that don't fit with the other figures and stuff like that. But, you know, all these exclusive lines really are kind of, you know, part of Kingdom or part of Studio Series 86. Like it all fits together. And uh, yeah, this is a figure that like 
the original pterosaur figure like like i said is a it's a fun toy but it doesn't really like fit the vibe of the character from the cartoon and this does a much better job so uh yeah i mean to get into transformation here he's again very similar to pterosaur or I keep saying that to Air Razor, um, since it is mostly the same uh, skeleton. But uh, first, you want to start off with the legs here, just untabbing them from the side and then rotating them down like that. Then unbending at the knee, unbending it in the shin, rotate around the foot, rotate around the lower leg, and do that on both sides here, just like that. Then uh, you could, you don't even really need to do this most of the time, but if you untab the tail piece here, that kind of gives you enough clearance to uh, to rotate around the waist here, and then you just kind of tab that back in. Uh, the arms here just come out to the side and then uh, rotate down like that, and then again, like I said, you know these really I think are more designed to point up in robot mode. So I liked having them, I liked having them pointing down into in a uh, pterodactyl mode, but rotate them up for robot mode, and then uh, just like pterosaur or just like Air Razor, uh, you kind of pull this piece down. It's on this sort of like dual double hinge in here on both sides. Uh, you want to get it kind of halfway just so you have enough clearance to rotate out the uh, the robot mode head. And then you can bring it down the rest of the way and tab that into place. And then uh, really, you know, the difference between him and Air Razor is uh, Air Razor also rotates around the beast head, whereas his beast head stays on this separate panel back here. So you can rotate it around on this joint and then rotate it back like this and having it sit off his back uh, like that to be more accurate to how it was on the uh, the show, show model. <clears throat> and then for the, uh, the wings here, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could keep them all the way out to the side like that. Uh, he had his wings kind of impossibly folded away in the show and they haven't quite gotten it to that point, kind of similar to Air Razor. Um, they do a similar thing where it kind of like, you know, makes the wings seem a lot smaller just by folding them up some. So you fold it up like that. And then with this double hinge, you want this uh, tab right here to go into that slot right there. So again, you just want to double hinge it so it fits like that. And then you can rotate this section like that and then just fold in the wing like that. So, you know, you can see wing all the way out to the side, wing much more compressed. It definitely works a lot better, but it's not quite as, you know, in the show, he really didn't have wings on his back at all. He just had like a couple fins kind of hanging off his arms, which I guess is what these spikes are really much more meant to homage. Um, but obviously, in terms of actual plastic, they can't really do that just because it, I don't know, it's sort of like an impossible transformation because his was one of the show models that, that really deviated the most from his toy who did have the wings kind of awkwardly out to the side. But yeah, there you have pterosaur in his robot mode and he looks really nice um so they did do a one bit of uh i guess sort of cheating here in that in the original uh toy for pterosaur and kind of the Im implication of the show model as well is that his chest plate was made out of the tail of the pterodactyl mode um they didn't do that here just because using the air razor mold like that's not where the chest ended up in uh in row in in the alt mode for air razor so it doesn't really work like that um but i mean it, it doesn't really have to be cheating because it's it's not like any of this like you know spotted detail was on his pterodactyl tail so I, I don't think the implication here is that you know this somehow magically got to the other side i think that this is just meant to be the chest of the pterodactyl instead now which i'm fine with uh that that works well enough for me it would have annoyed me a bit more if like some of this detail was like echoed on the other side but they do look very different so that works for me uh in terms of articulation he's very similar to uh to air razor obviously head is on a ball joint here i kind of wish it could tilt up a bit more since a lot of the times in the show when he was like flying around his head was kind of like you know superman forward and you can't you can kind of tilt it back with that transformation joint a little bit but it, it doesn't really have quite the same effect um but either way it, it's fine um the shoulders here can obviously rotate all the way around rotate out to the side he's got a bicep swivel uh, a little over 90 degrees of bend at the elbow there the uh the waist is on a swivel. It's a 
it's a little bit hindered by this back plate here. If you kind of fold that up, you can move it a bit more. Um, and it looks a little bit weird in profile, how it kind of sits so far forward. I think it was kind of like that on Air Razor too, but since Air Razor's chest stuck out a bit more, it wasn't as noticeable. But like, I'm constantly holding this figure and just wanting to like push this waist piece back, but it doesn't go any further back than that. I guess if you really wanted to, you could leave this rotated around and uh, rotate his legs back around. And you know, I think like proportionally silhouette wise, I think that works a little bit better, but I don't like, you know, seeing this as opposed to the silver and then the legs get a little bit off cut here too, because they, they're on sort of an offset swivel to, to move back for alt mode. So, eh, you know, it, it's proportionally, I think it maybe works out a little bit better, but visually otherwise, I think it, it still looks better the way it's intended. But either way, the, uh, the hips can go all the way out to the side and go forward and back. This piece is on a hinge, which it doesn't totally need to be because like the hips move out in front of it just fine, but whatever it is. Um, he's got a thigh swivel here, a very deep knee bend due to transformation, and then the feet are of course on ball joints just like they were before. And yeah, like I said, the feet are a little bit loose, which doesn't help that he's got all of this like back stuff too, because like if you, uh, you know, get him tilted forward, like he pretty much just like crumples under his own weight you really have to get the feet kind of like directly underneath his center of balance which makes him stand kind of strangely with his legs tilted back like that which isn't the worst thing but I don't know I might try to tighten up those ball joints at some point because it is pretty easy to knock him over even if you do have him balanced which is a little bit annoying um, you can bring on his weapon here which uh, despite the fact that it's got an unpainted red tip like I don't think it's it's not effects parts compatible or anything like that but obviously you can hold that in his hand here um, for storage which is kind of nice I mean you can do a couple different things you could mount it on his hip here using the same tab that I showed off in a uh, in pterodactyl mode you can't really put it on oh, I guess you can actually never mind I was saying you, I, for some reason, I thought you couldn't really put it on like that because it, it kind of bumps into this back piece here. But you could do that if you want it mounted on his hip. That looks kind of cool, but is a little bit cumbersome. Or uh, instead of that, I thought that originally I thought that this was the same tab that they use or the same slot rather that they used to peg it in uh, underneath the wing in uh, pterodactyl mode. But that's not actually true that the, uh, the actual slot is hidden away in here. So this is a separate dedicated uh, slot just for weapon storage, which is nice because if you tab it in like that, that's very out of the way and you hardly even notice it when looking at them from the front. And that I like a lot better. I, I like that as weapon storage. So yes, he's a figure that has dedicated weapon storage in both modes. Finally, we don't get enough of that in, uh, in modern figures and it really is something that constantly irritates me. But uh, yeah, to get on with the comparisons, here he is again with uh, Kingdom Air Razor, just so you can see how really different they look. Again, like if you look at the uh, the lower arms there, I think that's all the same. And the lower legs minus the feet, that's the same. And probably like some connection bits, but everything else is pretty much completely different, which is uh, super cool to see since they didn't really, you know, originally share a mold, even if they turn into somewhat similar creatures in that they both fly. But uh, yeah, that's what they look like together. Um, here he is again with our season one Predacons with Megatron, Dinobot, uh, Waspinator, and Scorponok. And uh, yeah, they uh, they look pretty good together, I think. Again, just waiting on Tarantulas to, to get the whole crew there. But yeah, very, very nice. And then last but not least, well, maybe least, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> here he is with the other uh, Golden Disc Collection characters with Mutant Tigatron, Puffer, and Road Ranger, and Jackpot and Sights. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, they don't really have much business being with each other, but you know... That's what the uh, the whole crew looks like together. All these uh, different guys from different universes who met up, and here's their their golden disc to go along with them. But uh, yeah, this is a, a pretty good set overall. Well, not you know series overall, the golden disc collection. And I definitely think that he was my he's my favorite one out of them. But I mean, figure wise, I, I don't know. Like he's probably not the best of the figures out of them, but he was the character I was most excited to get. Since again, we haven't really had a good pterosaur toy that you know is really accurate to the uh, the look of the cartoon um but yeah he uh, he's definitely a really nice figure
Um, they are supposedly doing another version of this guy sometime in the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line. So I'm not sure if that's going to be one that's like more toy accurate in colors with like the purple head and stuff like that. But if you don't want to pick up the one from Amazon, I, if there is some version of him that's coming out eventually. But yeah, uh, really, I enjoy this figure a lot. Really, my biggest complaint with him is just the, the floppy ankles. And that's something that can be fixed. It's a little annoying that I have to fix it, but it's not the end of the world. And even if I didn't fix it, like, you know, you can get him to balance just fine. It's just a little bit irritating and easy to push him over. But either way, uh, yeah, pretty good figure. If you enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. I do reviews every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And without further ado, here we have Transformers War for Cybertron Golden Disc Collection Terror Sore.